door. There's another story coming right up. And you can always learn more about Theodore Tugboat on the internet. Find us through PBS Online. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job down. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Boat up Hank and George and the harbor master too. Ahoy, Natalie Explorer. You may enter the harbor now. Hello. Boy, there sure are a lot of ships visiting the big harbor today. And it's part of my job as the harbor master, both to tell them when it's their turn to come in. Excuse me. Roger. Cumberland Container. Yes, you may enter the harbor now. You know, just between you and me, it's kind of fun giving orders. You know, I think George would certainly agree with me on that. See, George loves to give orders. Once in a while, George gives too many orders. Well, like the time the Tugs were trying to solve an underwater mystery. Prepare to turn. Order, George. Preparing to turn. Answer, Theodore. Theodore was helping George dock a big cargo ship. Slow down, called George. Slow down. Slowing, called Theodore. George whistled a big George whistle. It always felt great being in charge and telling everyone what to do. Start pushing, he commanded. George sure is being bossy today, thought Theodore. At last, the ship was safely at her dock. Theodore took a deep, happy breath. Now came his favorite part of working with George. Let's go home, shouted George. George's last order of the day. Wait. That's Fodak's emergency whistle, said George. And sure enough, Fodak was steaming towards the tugs, making his most important face. I believe I've located something beneath the harbor, he announced. What did he say? said George. I think Fodak said he found something under the water, explained Theodore. You see, sometimes Fodak uses very large words. Let's go, ordered George right away. And off he roared, followed by Fodak. Oh, no, groaned Theodore. Now I have to listen to more of George's orders. It's right under here, said Fodak. It's making some kind of emergency signal. I wonder what it is, said Theodore. I really don't know, said Fodak. It's a mystery. An underwater mystery, Theodore said thoughtfully. Well, we have to raise it up. I think I have an idea. We'll hook it with our anchors, shouted George, swinging into action. Follow me, Theodore. Well, Theodore didn't say anything. It it was no use trying to tell George what to do. Theodore, said George, butting up against him. This way. But Fodak said it was over here, replied Theodore. Just do what I say, snorted George. All of George's orders felt like they were building up inside Theodore's smokestack, ready to explode. You find it yourself, George, he said at last. George was very surprised to see everyone always did what he said. Oh, there's probably nothing important under here anyway, he rumbled, as if he really didn't care. Let's just go home. Well, this was one of George's orders Theodore would gladly listen to. Wait, wait, uh, I've just received word of my radio, said Fodak hurrying over. A big ship is heading right this way. Well, we were leaving anyway, said George. You don't understand, Fodak continued. That ship might be damaged by the underwater thing. I shall have to declare this an official harbor emergency. Now, an official harbor emergency is a very serious matter indeed. 
We can't raise this thing, said George. We can't even see where it is. I have a plan, said Theodore quietly. Well, let's listen to Theodore's plan, called Fodunk. Or we'll have to close the harbor. Well, said George, okay. But inside, he really wasn't very happy about not giving the orders. Theodore asked George to get Shelburne the sea barge. And Theodore returned, leading Northumberland submarine. Theodore, frowned George, why did you ask me to get Shelburne? And what's Northumberland doing here? Northumberland will dive down and find the underwater thing, explained Theodore. And then, Shelburne can raise it up with a special salvage crane. Well, right away, George could see it was a good plan. Northumberland, start diving, he commanded, getting his big voice back. Shelburne, directed George, start raising your crane. Shelburne began to raise his crane, slowly. Hurry up, ordered George. Northumberland, dive. Well, Theodore knew Shelburne just couldn't be rushed. And Northumberland, well, Northumberland just hated loud noise. Hey, my hat, said George. Oops. Sorry, George, said Shelburne. George could tell that everything was going all wrong, and this time, he knew why. Um, Theodore, he said quietly, just tell me what to do. I'm ready. Well, Theodore quietly sent Northumberland down to the bottom. And then he got Shelburne to slowly lower his crane hook. And the hunt for the underwater mystery began. Northumberland dove deeper and deeper beneath the inky waters of the big harbor. Up above, Vodak was listening carefully to the sub on his special radio. I think, Northumberland called a Vodak on his radio. I think, I think I've found something. like nothing the sub had ever seen before. Nothing under the water or above the water either. We found it, shouted Foduck. Push Shelburne this way. Pushing. Pushing! Soon, Shelburne felt a deep thunk on the end of his line. You hooked it, radioed Northumberland. We've hooked it, repeated Fodak. Now, pull! Shelburne began to pull up his cable. It's very heavy. He said. Hold Shelburne steady, radioed Northumberland. Hold Shelburne steady, Foda called to George and Theodore. Holding steady, the two tugs called as they muscled the big barge steady. Foda could see the great ship making the final turn towards the big harbor. We have to hurry, he shouted. Suddenly, Shelburne's crane just stopped. Something's stuck, groaned Shelburne. Northumberland, what happened down there? Radioed Foduck. It's caught under a rock, Northumberland called back. We'll have to move the barge around the rock, radioed Northumberland. Tell us where to go, Northumberland. 
Over this way. Radioed the sub. Bring Shelburne closer to me. Kodok called to the tugs. George and Theodore didn't waste a beat of their engines. Slow down, radioed Northumberland. We're going to lose it. Slow down, repeated Foduck. Turn a bit, George. Turning. George was straining and smiling. Even though it was very hard work, it was very exciting. It's free, radioed Northumberland. Now, stop. Stop, ordered Foda. Stopping. Stopping. Together, with Northumberland looking, Foda listening, Theodore and George struggling until their bumpers ached, keeping Shelburne steady. And Shelburne giving one last mighty heave of his cape. They raised the underwater mystery. Good work, everyone. Oh, we got it. George was sounding very excited. But what, what is it? Said Theodore. Fascinating said Vodak, floating closer. I believe it's a, a satellite. They usually fly way up in the sky, around the Earth. But this one must have fallen into the ocean. Well, let's get you out of the way, Theodore said to Shelburne. The sun was almost setting by the time the tired tugs had brought Shelburne to his dock. George hadn't said a word all the way back. He'd been thinking hard about something. I guess, he said at last, I guess I can't always give the orders. You're right, said Theodore quietly. From now on, continued George, I won't give any more orders. Well, not always said Theodore with a little smile. Then you just wouldn't be George, added Foda. You're right, said George with a great big grin. Let's go home. I mean, do you want to go home now? Let's go home, shouted Theodore and Foda. George whistled his great big George whistle. How oh, it always felt great being part of a team. Sure is fun working together here in the big harbor. What's that? Uh-oh. Well, how did this happen? It seems I've ordered two ships in together. The only trouble is I don't have enough tugboats to bring them both in at the same time. What am I going to do? The ships are trying to tell me something. Thanks! Now oh, that's a great idea. Those ships said they would take turns coming in. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. Why didn't I think of that?